Hi everyone, Barbara Rankin here with another video creator tutorial for color art. And you're probably wondering what I have all over my desk. Well, these are the packaging from embellishment pieces that I purchased at my local craft store. And here's one that I saved the paperwork for. This is from Tim Holtz Ideology. This was his carousel clips. And you can see the packaging makes a very nice mold for these shapes. This is quite thick and it doesn't have to be that thick when, we're, when we pour, whatever we pour into this. So let me just quickly go through. This is from, I think it was Tim Holtz Word Band, Word Bands. This was from Tim Holtz, uh, I believe it was Key Plates, Key Holes. And here's another one that has different shapes, two different sizes of rectangles. This is very thin, so this would have been the inner portion um, of the packaging as would have been something like this to hold that whatever was inside here in. Then I have, this is his vignette bases. There is a slight design on it, so it's may or may not really show up. I'm not real concerned about that. I just want to play and it's just going to cost me a little bit of permastone. This one had his um, little quote tiles and it's layered and so I thought this could be quite interesting the way it's layered on top of each other. So it's all about playing. We're going to make some embellishments with these. And if you get something like this, well, they're all like this, except for the inside pieces, you're going to want to cut it apart down the middle. Otherwise, it's going to keep flipping like that. So that's the first thing I'm going to do with this particular one is just cut that down the middle. And let's get some permastone mixed up. Okay, I've got my permastone here, which is a casting compound. And it's really nice. It's made by Activa. And it looks like baking powder, maybe. But it's not. And it will make a very nice, smooth, molded piece when we're done. But before I start mixing up my my permastone i wanted to grab a few primary elements and see what results i can get by dusting the colors a color into a mold now i'm just going to pick any mold and i've got a nice soft brush here and i'm just making sure i don't have any any dust or anything in there And I think we'll start with Guatemalan green. This is primary elements. And I don't need a lot. Um, the only reason I don't pour this into the mixture is twofold. First of all, the permastone is white. It's a white casting compound and it dries white. And what that will do is probably mute the metallic luster and also make it more pastel. So I've just dusted some some of the color inside, not a lot, and we'll learn from this whether we need to put more in or not. I think I will dust, do a little more dusting just to What it doesn't use will, will rub off, I would imagine. 
and let's try here's another here's that deep mold I was re talking about now this one you can see it's it's uh, it's not gonna stay straight so we're gonna have to find something to prop that up while it's drying otherwise we'll have a lopsided pour still too high let's see can use a mold that I'm not I can use a pat piece of packaging that I'm not using now I'm going to try bronze medallion Now, I don't care if there's any uh, primary elements on my brush because I use so little that it won't really matter. I'm just going to pick up some of the bronze medallion and brush it into another mold. Now, this is one of the pieces of packaging that I mentioned was, very, was pretty deep. You don't have to fill it to the top, and I won't. And of course, if we don't like what we get, we can just paint over it. It's as simple as that. Now let's try the one that the keyholes came in. I'm just going to add some primary elements to two of the outer openings, keeping the center plain. I think we'll do Merlot in one of them and the hot cinnamon in the other one. So I'll be working with just these three for now. Check each one to make sure they're level before you're ready to mix and pour your permastone. Instructions on the box are simple and straightforward. Add water and stir the permastone mixture slowly until the consistency, consistency of heavy cream, which is pretty much what I do. Now I've got about a half a cup of the powder here and I've filled this bottle with water. I'll be adding more and more water and mixing until I get the consistency I want. I'll go ahead and speed up the video here and come back in if I need to tell you something important. Oh, and I forgot to mention, in case you're sensitive to powders, you might want to cover your nose with a filter mask or something like that, just to be safe. Pour the mixture into the mold, and use your craft stick to move it around if your mix is too thick. If you get bubbles, you can tap your craft stick into the mixture, or what works better for me is to tap the package mold onto the surface. This usually brings the bubbles to the top, which in this case is actually the backside of the embellishment and won't be seen. After filling these three molds, I still had some of the mixture left. I added more water to thin it again because it had gotten thicker as I was working. I am using the vignette base mold for this last bit. It's always a good idea to have extras nearby just in case you still have some of that mixture left. Also, I recommend not overfilling the molds for best results. Otherwise, you will be spending a lot of time sanding, mending, or repairing the pieces to make them look right. I continued adding water and mixing what was left in my cup really well so I could finish off the smaller vignette base too. Now set the molds aside to dry. This may take several hours depending on your weather and temperature. Okay, so it's been a couple of days and my pieces are dry, except for this one, which is the vignette base. It still feels cool to the touch, probably because it is thicker than the others, so we may not be able to work with this one in this video, but we'll see. So this is the keyhole packaging, and although I didn't brush any pigment in the center section, it looks like the powder migrated into it a little. There may be some rough edges on your pieces from pouring into our packaging, or molds as we will call them, but these are very easy to smooth away just by using an emery board or a piece of sandpaper. See how nice and smooth that edge is now? And the product is very smooth when cured and it feels almost like stone or marble. And with the exception of a few spots, the powder doesn't seem to be rubbing off either. So I'll go ahead and release the rest of these 
But I want to show you that they do have a nice effect if you're looking for a stone or marble look that has just a hint of color to it, just like something you might find in a tile shop. I sure plan to experiment with these pigments some more to see what effects I can achieve. Now here's a pack of sandpaper I got at the dollar store. It has several different grits and I'm using 80 grit, which is the roughest piece in the pack. And you can just take your piece and rub it over the sandpaper like this and on a nice flat surface, it will keep the sanding even and level. I still like to go back to my emery board to smooth the edges and for the more detailed areas. I'm also using a cloth to clean off the dust particles. So I'll go ahead and sand the rest of the pieces and then I'll come back and we can start painting them. Oh, and let me show you the vignette bases that I made using those last bits of the permastone. I'm not really very happy with these. They are not smooth and look gritty and somewhat crumbly. The permastone was drying up in the cup and I added more and more water, trying to get a smooth consistency. But it does say on the package not to reconstitute it after it dries. Hence, lesson learned. I will try this again sometime with a fresh batch of the permastone, with better results, I'm sure. Before we start painting the pieces, I've lined them up with their respective primary elements color that I used when pouring them into the molds. I also wrote on the back of them what pigment I used, so I may refer to them during the video. If you'll remember, this piece here was part of a three-part mold, had these three together, and I didn't actually brush any pigment into this one, but I think the colors that were in these two pieces kind of migrated into this one, which is why you see some color on there, but not a lot. Now for some fun. I'm going to use the bronze medallion primary elements for this first one that already has that same color on it. Just pick up the powder from the jar lid and rub it all over the piece. I'm not sure why it is sticking so well to the permastone, but it seems to be doing pretty well. However, I will use a fixative spray to ensure that the primary element stays put. For added texture, I'm going to use this stamp set from Artsy that has small stamp images, which are perfect for the sizes I'm working on. Use a black archival ink to stamp partial images of this mini script stamp randomly over the top and sides, drying occasionally so you can handle the piece without smearing the ink. I laid the stamp on my table, stamp side up, and took the piece to the stamp to get good impressions on the sides of the piece. When all the ink was dry, I rubbed a light coat of the bronze medallion primary elements over the stamped images to knock them back I used Krylon Crystal Clear Spray to fix the bronze medallion primary elements on the surface. You could also use Krylon's workable fixive or whatever you have on hand. However, I noticed that my thumbprint left a mark in the center of the piece, but I will cover it up with more paint, so it should be all right. I have a napkin here that has lots of smaller images on it, which is perfect for decoupaging onto small items such as these. I cut one of the birds out and now I'm going to adhere to the surface. It will cover up my fingerprint that I left on the top and it will look good too. I'll be using a soft bristle brush and an ultra matte varnish to adhere the napkin. First apply a light coat of the varnish to the surface, then gently lay the napkin cut out over the top. Working from the center out, carefully brush out any air bubbles and cover the napkin with a coat of the varnish as well. These napkins are usually one or two ply and those need to be removed. Then they are very delicate and easily torn, so a gentle application is needed. And dry your piece before proceeding any further. You can see how the napkin just disappears into the background. I found these rhinestones in my stash and thought they'd be perfect for adding to this open area on my piece. So I used a craft knife to pick up the gems and then set them in place. Usually I'd add glue to make sure they don't pop off, but I'll be adding a coat of embossing powder in the next step so they won't go anywhere after that. Next I'm going to ink up the top of my piece with Versamark ink. This stuff is sticky and the embossing powder will really stick to it. I'm using clear UT, also known as ultra thick embossing enamel. And I've placed my piece in a coffee filter to catch the excess. 
Start heating it with your heat tool until all the embossing powder has melted. But be very careful now. The permastone will get very hot and so will the UT. So you will want to wait until it cools before handling it, which is why I'm leaving it in the coffee filter and adding pinches of more UT while the first layer is still hot. The first layers always look bumpy, which is a cool look for some occasions, but the more layers you add, the more level the UT becomes and gives you a clear glass-like coating, which is the effect we're going for. Using the coffee filter, carefully pick up the piece and set it off to the side to cool. Let's work on the blue piece. I like the subtle look of this one, so I've cut out a flower from the napkin and I'm carefully removing the two plies from the top sheet. I'm going to use matte medium to adhere it this time, just to show you that you can use different mediums for the same job. I'm going to apply the matte medium with my finger this time too, and then gently lay the napkin piece over it. I'll use my finger to apply more medium to the top surface and carefully push out any air bubbles. Then I'll dry it with the heat tool. I added a couple of rhinestones in the upper left corner, and then I'll add a coat of the crackle accents over the top. By placing my permastone onto a piece of cardboard and some nonstick craft sheet makes it easy for me to pick it up and move it out of the way to dry. And you will want it to dry naturally for best results. If you get any bubbles, you can use a straight pen to pop them. After the crackle accents have dried thoroughly, take your Guatemalan green primary elements and rub the powder over the cracks with your finger. The powder will sink down into the cracks and make a beautiful texture. I haven't used this product for a while, and I'm not sure why I didn't get many cracks on the top, but I'm thinking it's because I laid down such a thick layer, while the sides were quite thin where the cracks are most prevalent. So keep that in mind if you use this product. Perhaps a thinner layer works best. Let's work on the Merlot piece next. I'm going to intensify the color on this one by first inking it up with the Frost Versamark ink. As I apply the ink to the sides, I'm trying to be extra careful not to touch too much of the inked areas. It is sticky just like the clear Versamark, but has a slight it is sticky just like the clear Versamark, but has a slight frosty appearance. I've never used it, so I'm just being curious. First, I picked up some of the Merlot with a dry brush and brushed it over the ink, leaving some areas blank. Then I grabbed the bronze medallion and covered the rest of the open areas with it. You'll see that as I blended the colors, I used the end of my paintbrush to move the piece around so I didn't touch the piece and make fingerprints again. Then I added some more Merlot in to bring back that nice orange color. And lastly, I brought in some of the Guatemalan green again to add that patina touch to it. I used the end of my brush to nudge the permastone onto a piece of cardboard so that I could take it outside and fix it with a finished spray of the Krylon Crystal Clear. I have a different idea for this next piece. I'm going to use the True Silver Vivid to make this piece look like pewter or silver. I first brushed a coat of the Vivid True Silver over the piece, making sure to get good coverage on the sides too. And then I use my heat tool to dry it. Next, I placed the piece onto a coffee filter and then chose one of the stamped images from the same artsy stamp set. Using Versamark ink, I stamped the image onto the top portion of the permastone and poured the black pus embossing powder over it. When heat set, it had a more raised and gritty feel and look to it. Now, I've had this embossing powder for a while, but regular black embossing powder would work just fine. Remember to be careful with your heat tool and wait for the, for the piece to cool before handling it. It gets pretty darn hot. 
I know it looks like I picked it up right after heating it, but remember, this is a video and not real time. Now I'm painting the black embossing powder with a coat of the True Silver Vivid Ultra Metallic. Now I'm going to antique it with a wash of the China Black Vivid Ultra Metallic in some water. Then take a soft cloth and wipe away the excess. If needed, you can add another coat and repeat the process. Using the black archival ink pad, I'm adding more antiquing to the stamped image by hitting those high spots with the ink pad, being careful not to get the ink elsewhere. I also added some of the black ink to the edges. Next, I'm going to glue a small metal keyhole to the bottom section of my permastone piece using my fast grab tacky glue. Place the next piece onto a scrap of cardboard and dribble a small amount of the solution over the top using your finger to spread it over the surface. This product will turn your primary elements into a watercolor wash and also acts as a binder. Pick up a dry brush and dip it into the hot cinnamon primary elements, spreading it over the wet solution. You can see how vibrant the colors are with this product. But by the same token, adding more of the solution will dilute the color and turn it into a wash of watercolor without actually watering it down. You can see what I mean here, where I've added more of the solution and less of the Guatemalan green for a more translucent watercolor look, or add more pigment for a deeper color. Now I've picked up a small amount of the solution onto my finger and then picked up more of the hot cinnamon to randomly add that color back in where it seems to be lacking. You'll also want to dry your colors between applications to keep them from blending in with the next layer. I chose this small flower vine image from the same artsy stamp set. So I inked it up with the black archival ink, and then I stamped it onto the bottom portion of the permastone piece, allowing it to drape over the edge. Next, I picked up the black archival ink onto my finger and distressed the edges of the piece, adding more black around the sides as well. Next, you'll need to remove the screw from a Tim Holtz hitch fastener and also remove the shank from a metal button. Grab a clear drying glue that is made to adhere metal and glue the hitch fastener to the bottom part of the permastone and then glue the button to the top circular piece on top. My idea for this piece is to hang it on the wall near the door and hang an extra house key from it. Now, back to this piece that I previously took outside to spray with the crystal clear coating. I used this Azure embellishing butter on a decorative metal keyhole. And now I want to add it to the edges of the permastone. This is a pretty antiquing effect that really adds age and vintage goodness to your pieces. You can speed up the drying time with your heat tool, and then you can glue the keyhole to the center of your embellishment. For more inspiration, you can find me on these social media links. 
If you enjoyed today's project video, please give me a thumbs up, and I hope you will consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, and always take time to play.